Everybody, let's check in with our friends. 8680 Crack and Pinning, they're our host team here. They've been building an absolutely phenomenal machine all weekend. Hopefully, you've been checking out the YouTube videos we've been uploading of their team. 8680, why don't you introduce yourselves and tell us more about your robot this year, or this 30 hours. Yeah, so our design has changed quite a bit from what we showcased earlier. Most notably, our like intake, outtake, claw design has shrunk a lot, like we said we do. Uh, it's now better fit to the form of the cones, and it takes a lot of the bulk away so that we are uh, able to stack the cones on top of the poles uh, in a good fashion. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks brings a full suite of options that are free for first teams to download, including SolidWorks Cloud CAD apps for any device with a browser, and SolidWorks for Windows where you can connect SolidWorks to the cloud for collaborating and managing data. Get it all for free at SolidWorks.com first. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in first. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career application. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. So can you run us through your robot just from start to finish? Uh, not just what you've done recently, but run us through the entire machine. Sure. So we have our double reverse four bar. Uh, again, we're kind of perfecting a design we had in Skystone. Uh, and it's built on a drivetrain that we were prototyping last year, and we use that, A, because it's a smaller drivetrain, and you can we can strafe around the poles easier, and so that the small black parts, we can just go over those, because it has the arc to go over the barriers from last year. And so then, on top of our four bar system, we have a claw that expands and contracts to pick up the cones, and uh, again, another notable feature is the five pound weight that we have on there to balance it out. Uh, because once the four bar goes up, it does get pretty top heavy. So can you talk about some other features of your robot? Have, what have you considered from a programming standpoint? Uh, advice for teams, things like that, guys. Can we talk about the programming? Um, so in terms of programming, we tried to simplify this as much as we could. So our entire robot is, we have our two drivers controlling it. Uh, we're having a bit of low battery issues right now because we were running it to test and we we're having some issues. But normally we're able to completely control it from just our two drivers. And we have full control over the arm and the drivetrain. One person controls the driving, the other person controls the arm mechanism. Um, and we find that when we divide it up this way, it makes it really simple because it gives a, each person something to focus on so that they can try to specialize in what they're doing. And it allows us to be very successful with our overall design and running the robot as a whole in Teleop. So uh, going with the, the double four bar that you have on there, uh, is that something that you would advise your teams to consider for a uh, power play season? It's definitely an option. It's rather complicated. Um, it definitely has some flaws and, like I said, complicated mechanism. So if you want something that's easy to do and quick, it's probably not the best option. But if you want something that will be able to go up and down fast and lift high, you'll, a double reverse four bar would work really well. And how about from your uh, grabber? Uh, you guys have uh, probably the largest uh, grabber that you have so far. Are you looking uh, for your actual competition robot of uh, doing a similar one or any sort of other uh, potential design for scoring? Um, we're not sure yet. This, this has been working very well for us, but another design we talked about is sort of two flywheels to suck the cones in and then like a slide mechanism that would, that would place them uh, up on top of the goals. That's something that we talked about making in the future, but obviously that's a big change, so it's not something that would be feasible in the 30-hour build challenge. Um, yeah. Uh, the weight that you guys are going to we created a video of that before showing the, the uh, stability for that. Uh, would there be something else maybe you'd place uh, instead of a five-pound weight? Like, what other uh, potential, like, mechanisms would you maybe have on your robot to lower your CG? Well, um, 
one thing that we were talking about is something that would, because as you can see, there's a lot of tipped cones on the ground here, something that we would be able to just like hit the cones with that would knock them upright so we could easily grab them with the claw. And like the weight of that would add to the uh, center of mass at the bottom. We have a question. Cryoforce GD says, so I was looking at 8680's wheel design and I was wondering because I found out yesterday at Utah kickoff, depending on how far the wheels are from the wall, it could get stuck on the poles. Does that happen with this robot? No, no, we have not had that happen. Um, if, if we like go full on to the pole, like sure it'll get stuck, but it's nothing we can't like get out of in like a few seconds. But I mean, because of the small size of our drivetrain and the experience of our drivers, that's not an issue we've really had to deal with. Next, Dekutree asked, do you think a Vex in the zone style grabber would be more effective? It's two rubber band rollers in parallel and would come down onto the cones. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of what we were talking about earlier with another design idea that we had that we might uh, work on uh, after the 30 hour build, but something that we didn't have time to do now. That's definitely uh, something that we will prototype later. And you know, we'll kind of compare and contrast the weaknesses and strengths of each. Uh, any final lessons learned from Robot in 30 Hours that uh, you might have uh, advice for uh, teams tackling the Power Play Challenge? Um, one thing would just be to keep your initial thoughts and design simple. This challenge has a lot of room for opportunities, but it also has the ability to be done with some fairly simple mechanisms and robot designs which will allow pretty much everyone to be able to compete in the challenge. You don't have to be building really complex mechanisms to do well. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. SolidWorks brings a full suite of options that are free for FIRST teams to download, including SolidWorks Cloud CAD apps for any device with a browser, and SolidWorks for Windows where you can connect SolidWorks to the cloud for collaborating and managing data. Get it all for free at SolidWorks.com slash first. Special thanks to Team 8680, Cracking Pinion for hosting Robot in 30 Hours and also to their sponsors.